everyone, welcome to Foam Feast. I'm your host, Adam Holtzaffel. The goal of this program is to pair a meal and a movie. Um, the movie we'll be going for this weekend's Motel Hell, and we're making St. Louis cut ribs. What they are, they're basically spare ribs with the tips cut off. I got these because they're on sale. Um, I recommend going for the spare ribs and doing the surgery yourself to cut off the tips. And then using that meat and beans or whatever you want. So the recipe I based this off of is Traeger Grills because I use a Green Mountain pellet grill. I mainly use the Tra Traeger recipe for time and temperature. Um, what I'll be doing, I have four racks of ribs here. I'll be coating them top and bottom with mustard. And then I didn't have time to make my own rub, so I'm using D's Nuts Pecan Rub. And what we're doing, we're starting on the bottom of the ribs. These will go face down on the grill. And we're going to just slather the mustard on. It helps the rub stick. And then once we have that, that side coated, we'll flip them over and go to the top. And don't be shy with the rub, kids. It'll, you know, give a nice crust, nice flavor. And it should complement the homemade barbecue sauces we're using, which... We're going to do two racks in a raspberry chipotle barbecue sauce and two racks in a pumpkin habanero. And sorry folks, those recipes are uh, staying on lockdown. Now we're going to flip these, and then the excess rub will just fall on the pan, and you can kind of let the meat set in that overnight. It'll adhere to it. I'm using yellow mustard. You can use whatever mustard you want. If you like ballpark mustard, Dijon, brown mustard, whatever you want at your show, do it however. Some people inject their ribs. I don't really get into that. Getting the top side coated with the mustard. It's all on there. And we're just going to... Again, just coated in the rub. Then what we'll do once these are all coated, we're going to put them in the fridge and let them sit overnight until time to throw them on the grill. Okay, so we've had the ribs in the fridge overnight. Um, we're still going to wait a few hours before firing up the grill and getting them going. So let's talk about the movie we're pairing them with. We chose Motel Hell because, you know, it takes all different types of critters to make Farmer Vincent's fritters. So, Motel Hell's kind of a B-movie, got a cult following. I don't think it ever really gained the traction most people thought it would. It stars Rory Calhoun as Farmer Vincent. Him and his sister own kind of a bed and breakfast where they also do meat processing. Um, and what it is, it's kind of cheesy, kind of hokey, definitely did not age well by today's standards. But it's a fun film. I think that's what some modern horror is missing these days is it's more drama-centric, and it's lost the fun. So that's why you see me do a lot of retro reviews and uh, go back to the stuff I grew up on, cutting my teeth as a kid, basically. Um, 
what works for the film, you have Wolfman Jack, and uh, you have a solid story that doesn't rip off Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And um, if you've seen the King of the Hill episode, Pygmalion, it kind of has a feel like that, where, you know, there's some twists and turns involved. You find out one of the cops is actually... Farmer Vincent's brother and kind of helps cover up their crimes. Um, they also have a field where they plant bodies and sever the vocal cords so the victims can't scream. So, you know, not really gory, but just a great 80s movie. And we'll stop there, come back here in a little bit after we get the ribs going and we'll continue discussing the film okay so we're getting ready to start up the grill i've got my ribs sitting out you can see the rubs kind of soaked in a little so i'm gonna top off the hopper which holds the pellet i use louisiana grills competition blend once we get the grill up to temperature, we're going to add the amazing smoke tube to add a little more smoke to it and get these bad boys thrown on. Okay, so we've got the smoker through the startup stage. We're weighing on to get to 150 degrees before we set the time at 250. Um, what I'm doing now, I'm lighting the amazing smoke tube using a butane lighter. This should burn for four hours, which is perfect for the ribs and should give it some extra smoke flavor. Okay, so the grill's up to 250. We've got our four racks of ribs on. Got our smoke tube going. Um, we're going to come out every hour, spritz this with a little bit of apple juice. Should be done in about four hours, then we'll sauce them, let them go for another half hour to an hour. Hey guys, we're two hours in. We've hit these once with the applesauce, or apple juice, it's time to hit them again. As you can see, the smoke tube's doing its job, it's... Keeping it nice and smoky in there. Ribs are looking pretty good. So we should be done in about two to three more hours. Okay, so we've got our barbecue sauces ready. On the left is our raspberry chipotle. On the right is our pumpkin habanero. We're going to hit two racks of ribs with each of these. Um, there will be two of the pumpkin and two of the raspberry, so let's get it started. So, what we're doing now, we're saucing the ribs. I've already sauced the two on the right, top and bottom, with the raspberry chipotle. The two on the left are getting the pumpkin habanero treatment. From what you can see, you can see the meat pulling away from the bone here. That means the ribs are going along as planned. Now, what this will do, this will give the ribs a nice coating of sauce. It'll add to the bark that's on there from the rub and the mustard we use to bind it. So now that we've got everything coated, we're going to give it an hour to set. Now, what happens, though, with these ribs, smoking them, you'll see a little bit of give, but they won't fall off the bone. If they fall off the bone, that means they were boiled. I call that bullshit, not barbecue. So, we'll give these an hour, let the sauce tighten up, then we'll come and take them off the grill. Hey boys and girls, it's time to make our sides. So what we're doing here, we're uh, spiralizing some sweet potatoes. We're gonna make a sweet potato noodles. 
with a peanut sauce. Um, this is can be a kind of a time consuming process, but well worth it. Takes about 10 minutes for the, the potatoes to cook. So once I'm done with this, I'm gonna get a pan going on medium, get the potatoes in, then get the peanut butter sauce made. All right, we've got our sweet potatoes on. They're almost done. Now, the way this started, we did a couple of teaspoons of olive oil, let them cook for a few minutes, added some water to steam it a little bit, and we've got our sauce mixed. It is creamy peanut butter, garlic, sriracha, lime, ginger, soy sauce, rice vinegar, and sesame oil. We're going to add this to the potatoes, get it mixed, and we're almost there. Hey, we've got our, all right, we've got our propane grill gas uh, set to high. And what we're going to grill on it, we're going to throw some asparagus on there. We tossed it in olive oil and sea salt. Should take about two, three minutes to cook. That should line up perfectly when the ribs are done, and we'll be chowing down soon. So check it out and enjoy. All right, it looks like our ribs are done. Look at that. That sauce looks beautiful. Got a nice look to them. Can't wait to dig in. Okay, so we're ready to watch Motel Hell. On the left, we've got two pumpkin habanero ribs. Uh, sweet potato noodles with peanut butter sauce. On the right, we've got two raspberry chipotle ribs and grilled asparagus. Enjoy. So we've got our food ready. We're doing kind of an odd pairing for this dish to go with Motel Hell. Um, we've done smoked St. Louis cut ribs, two racks of raspberry chipotle barbecue, Two racks of pumpkin habanero barbecue, which those sauces are going to the grave. Sorry, kids. Um, we did sweet potato noodles with a peanut sauce and grilled asparagus. So back to the movie. Like I said earlier, it has a cult following, but I don't think it ever gained the traction that you'd expect, like... There's a handful of merchandise here and there, but never took off like some of the other films of the era, like Evil Dead or the Halloween franchise, or even 1986's Trick or Treat. Like, I think that's a bigger cult following than Motel Hell. But... Overall, the story's basically Farmer Vincent and his sister Ida are growing humans. They uh, set up traps on the roadway to capture late-night travelers. They'll cause a car wreck, a bike wreck, you know, something along the, those lines where they plant the bodies in their field sever the vocal cords, and inject them with kind of a brine, rub, marinade type gimmick that gives them flavor to Gunt Farmer Vincent's fritters. Um, one of these accidents is a motorcycle wreck with a gentleman and his date. Farmer Vincent Kind of as a thing for the chick, so he helps nurse her back to health. Ida's jealous, and their brother that's a cop is also infatuated with the young woman. I think they could have cut that aspect down some, shortened it up. The runtime of the film's an hour and 41 minutes. It's a little longer than it needed to be. I think they could have easily cut 20 minutes out of that and tightened it up some. Um, John Ratzenberger also has a small cameo in it as a drummer of one of the bands that is turned into food. 
And uh, he's well known as being Cliff from Cheers and his voice work in Pixar movies. Overall, it's a fun film. It's not great by any means, but it's a movie you can get together with your friends, have some food, turn it on, and laugh at quotes like, there's too many people in the world, not enough food that solves both problems. Um, the most memorable scene, though, is near the end where Farmer Vincent's going on his rampage while wearing a pig's head. Uh, for whatever reason, that always reminds me of the King of the Hill episode, Pygmalion. Even though it's different, it still has a Motel Hell influenced vibe to it. And it mixes uh, the comedy a little bit better than Motel Hell does. Um, overall, I'd give this maybe a C plus B minus grade. Um, it's an average film. I'd say if you can find it streaming or dirt cheap on DVD, it's worth grabbing. But it's, it's definitely not a film that everyone will be into. So uh, that wraps up this episode. See you next time on Film Feast.